Colored Valley Cooks. Are y'all ready to cook supper? I am. I'm hungry. Chris came in from fishing. He's hungry too. We are going to make fried cube steak with gravy. Yummy. Uh, I'm going to make a few biscuits real quick. I'm going to mix them up first. We are going to fry up some potatoes because I've got, and I'll tell you why we're having to fry them in a minute. And then I've got granny green beans on the stove already, so we're going to have a good supper. So stay tuned for fried steak, biscuits, gravy, fried potatoes, a true southern meal, right? Um, we are going to get started first mixing up our biscuits. I'm going to pull y'all in close so you can see. And I hope you enjoy tonight's supper. It is a full supper, so it will be from start to finish, so be patient with that. And y'all have fun while I have fun in the kitchen uh, cooking. My, my oven's over there beeping because it says, hey, I'm preheated and I'm ready for the biscuits. So we got to hurry up and get these biscuits in the oven. So let's get them mixed up real quick and throw them in there, okay? Hope you're having a wonderful day. I sure am. So we've got a bowl, some self-rising white lily flour, of course. Uh, and I know y'all made me see me make biscuits plenty of times, but you know what? Mama made them every day, didn't yours? Mine sure did. My granny did too. Um, granny made biscuits and cornbread every day. So I'm just making a few biscuits. Enough for me and Chris is all I'm making. I'm not making a huge batch. So I'm going to reach back here and get my half cup scoop. And so I'll just make a cup recipe. So we're going to blend this in there. Where are you going, baby? Well, I I didn't want that door closed, honey bun, because it's hot in here. Well, you may as well, because it's hot in the kitchen. You know that. When I got the... Is it live? It's 80, yeah, it's live. It's like 80-something degrees outside. It's hot down here, y'all. I mean, you don't have to video me. We're fine just like we are if you want to rest and just, you know, or whatever. Whatever you want to do. You can video me. I'm sure they won't mind. Either way. All right, we're going to put a little bit of grease in my skillet right here. You want to hand me the buttermilk? You can do that. That'd be sweet. All right. Thank you, sweetie. I never have everything out like I think I do. And I think to be quick tonight with these biscuits, I may roll them in my hands. Just mix them up in here and then roll them in my hands. And be done with it. And then we can have the uh, counter for something else. I'm just using this blending fork and getting all this flour in here. And then I'm just going to roll up the biscuits. So I'm doing them a little different than you've seen me do before. Because it's quicker that way. Now, I'm not going to get in a rush and get all crazy on y'all. Like I usually do when I'm live. I'm just going to make supper and be calm and collected. How's that? So, I'm already trying to rush myself and I'm going to stop. Alright, so, there's my biscuit dough. There's our skillet. And I'm just going to reach in here and get a little flour on my hands and roll these up. Stick them in the oven. Hope y'all are having a great day. It's wonderful Wednesday. Today I did a motivational speech. I don't know why, but the Lord laid it on my heart to do one, and I did. So, if you got a lot of time on your hands, you can watch my motivational speech. It's long, but it was heartfelt. But I still wanted to cook for y'all today. I'm in a good mood. Been in a good mood all day today.
So I'll probably have about four big biscuits, all right, with one cup of flour. So it was about an eighth cup of uh, shortening, about a cup of flour, and enough buttermilk to paste it all together, all right? We're just gonna roll them up by hand, throw them in the oven. The oven's on 400 because it's my little oven. Now, if it were my big oven, it'd be on 450. But my little oven cooks a lot in a smaller space so it gets hotter, so I put it on 400. So there's our biscuits. Y'all see them when they come out. I'm gonna throw them in here right quick. Yes, I got my air going. Y'all probably can hear it blowing. Well, my goodness, this thing has changed temperatures. I'm gonna have to reset it, y'all. Just give me a second. Uh, stop. Stop, stop. Four hundred. All right. All right, I'm gonna rinse my hands off. We're gonna get this uh, meat breaded right quick. So we'll bread our meat, and then we'll start frying our potatoes while the bread breading sits on the meat for a minute. Okay. You're going to need two plates. You're going to need an egg. And one egg should do it. I'm not going to fry up all this meat, just some of it. I bought a big pack because it was on sale. But I'll freeze part of it when I'm done. And no, it's not going to hurt nothing. It's sitting out on the counter for a few minutes before I freeze the rest of it. So you're just going to beat up an egg. Let me get me a washer rag. I just splattered it. Lord have mercy. Let me get it up. Okay. So you're going to beat you up an egg. And you're going to put you some self-rising flour in a pan, and of course, if you can get white lily, get it. I just went to our Walmart today, and y'all are not going to believe they did not have white lily flour in our Walmart. I like to faint it. We are in the South. What is this world coming to? All right. So, keepsake. Everybody's keepsake is different. Can I say it's, a more, it's according to where you buy your steak and whether or not it's tough. You get your steak, and I'm not trying to be ugly, but you get it from somewhere like Kroger, and it's going to be like rubber. I'm just being honest. So, let me tell you how to tell. Do you see this white tendon running through the meat? When you go pick out your steak, when it is mechanically tenderized like this is, and all you can see is this, don't buy it. If you can see a lot of nice, pretty red meat, that means it's tender. So, if all you can see is that other kind of meat, then don't pick it up. All right, now we're going to say two of these pieces out, and we're going to cook two of these pieces. And i got to scoot this over so y'all can tell what I'm doing. So I'm going to make these two pieces right here. It should be tender enough you can almost pull it apart like that. And I don't like to fry my steak in big pieces. I actually like to pull it apart. So I'm gonna pull it apart. And really, that right there is enough to feed us supper. These, these right here, okay? So I'm gonna go rinse my hands off, then I'm gonna season the meat and we're going to get it ready to fry up. Now, the key to frying meat, and frying anything, really, a lot of people say they can't fry stuff. Can I say you can if you get your hot grease hot enough? Most people don't get the grease hot enough. And then their meat, or whatever it is they're frying, wants to sit in there. I'm using this salt today because my hands are wet, and I don't want to reach in that salt box. Salt, pepper, and I'm strange compared to a lot of cooks I know because I only season one side of the meat, but I do a good job of it. Now we're gonna use some 
of my favorite uh, seasoning, and it's Weber Steak and Chalk. And Chris does not like any kind of garlic powder on his steak, but sometimes I will use onion powder. But most of the time, just the steak and chalk, okay? And that's salty as well. Now we're gonna dip this into the egg mixture and then coat it with the flour. And that's how we're gonna fry it. We're just gonna coat it once. We're not gonna double dip it or nothing because self-rising flour's got bacon powder in it and it gets real nice and crunchy on whatever you're frying. It does a great job. So all you need is one egg. So we're just gonna wet it. Good. All of them good. And this egg. And I do egg wash sometimes and I do buttermilk wash sometimes. It's toward what I'm cooking. Really, both of them work good. The main difference is the egg, uh, buttermilk actually gets the flour browner quicker. So like if you're cooking something like chicken bone in that takes a long time or something that's really thick and it's gonna take longer to cook it, use egg wash, okay? And it'll be pretty and golden. If you use buttermilk on something that takes longer to cook, it's gonna get a lot browner. But for something like this that cooks really fast, you can, it'll be fine. Whichever one you got works, okay? So now we're going to coat them in our flour just one time, but do it good, use your hands. Press it in there good, flip it over, lay it to the side. I love pie plates, y'all. My favorite, one of my favorite things in the kitchen is a pie plate. It's like a big deep plate, you know? That's what it is, a big deep plate. <laughs> ah. So we're going to bread these. Then we're gonna hop over here. We're gonna peel some potatoes real quick and some good old hot oil with a little bit of butter in it. And once those potatoes start to fry, we'll start frying these. And then as soon as this is finished frying, we'll make some gravy. We're doing it all today. And usually I don't fry two things at one time. Let me tell you why I'm doing that tonight. I haven't cooked all my potatoes and I don't put them in the refrigerator and they've gotten a little bit of rubber, rubbery. And you know what I'm talking about. I'll show them to you in a minute. If you don't know what I'm talking about. Because you cannot boil potatoes that are old and a little bit rubbery. If you do, they turn into paste. A lot of people wonder why their cream potatoes turn into paste. Because you're, more than likely it's because you're using an old potato. <coughs> Not how you're cooking them. <coughs> I didn't even clean out my sink before I logged on, so y'all just gonna have to excuse the mess tonight. All right. Now this is gonna go over to the stove and it'll be ready to fry when we get ready to fry. And I'm gonna bring y'all over to the stove. Now I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna put you on my left side. Okay, we got green beans. I'm going to fry my steak in this one. I'm going to fry my potatoes in this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get me some oil. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And it don't take a whole lot of oil. I'm just frying enough potatoes for me and Chris. And a lot of people wanna know what I do with my used oil. I do reuse it if it's in a vegetable. If it's with a meat, I don't reuse it. And when I fry potatoes, I always add a little bit of butter in the oil. But we're gonna let this get hot. It should get hot fast because this is a big eye. And we're gonna start cutting up our potatoes. And tonight, I am going to cut my potatoes right up into the oil. So I'm gonna step over here and peel a potato and then come back over there and put it in the oil. So go ahead and 
uh, take your potatoes. Now this ain't good and hot, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this, okay? I'm trying to show y'all how to cook, and I'm, you're supposed to wait till it gets hot, but it's gonna be hot really quick. So if you decide to cut your potatoes up in your oil, then uh, just be sure you don't get splattered, okay? For the most part. And it's gonna heat up. Now, I really only need to cut up two potatoes because there's two people. If you're cutting up a medium potato, it should feed one person. And that's whether you're frying it or creaming it. Believe it or not, it really will. But it has to be a pretty good size one. Now, I'm gonna show y'all what I'm talking about. When I say a rubbery potato, this potato is older. See how wrinkled it is? And I'm not even going to use it. It's too old. And see how you can kind of bend it? Do not boil a potato and make cream potatoes out of a potato like this. If you do, they'll be pasty every time. They won't be fit to eat. Now, here's a potato that's kind of in between. And you can always fry these potatoes. They're delicious. Just don't cream them, okay? So I'll be right back, I'm gonna peel this one. Now, if you rinse your potato right before you fry it, you better make sure you dry it off with a paper towel or the water hitting that oil will pop you. And you don't wanna get popped. So I wanted to start the potatoes because it's going to take them just a little bit longer or just about the same. It'll probably take them just a little bit longer than it does the meat. Now when I make cube steak, I don't fry it to death because it's steak and it's not going to hurt you if it's not completely well, well done. Now you can, even if I cook it for, let's say, two minutes on each side, it's probably still going to be completely well done unless it's really thick. One of my pieces is a little thicker, so I may have to go three minutes per side, or two minutes and three minutes. Now we're gonna put in a little bit of butter. That always makes it taste good. It also makes it taste good when you're frying pies to put some butter in your grease, okay? Now, we gotta get us some more oil. I'm out of oil. I gotta go in under and get some oil. All right, I'll be right back. I gotta go get some oil for the meat. Hey, hi. and I forgot he was coming. So, I'm not going to be a part of it. I had to go get my some oil. <laughs> oh, my Lord. So, I'd say we got plenty of oil, wouldn't you? Crazy. All right. So, we got our potatoes going. Oh, I know one thing. I bet our biscuits are done. Let's get them out. Well, they're not quite done. They look pretty though. They're getting there. Okay. Biscuits take about 20 minutes usually, at least. I guess it hadn't been quite that long since we've been on here. All right, I always take a flat side of a spatula when I'm frying and pick stuff up off the bottom with a spatula first because what happened is I put that in there when it wasn't hot yet, so it stuck some. It usually don't do that. 
if you wait till the grease gets hot, that's what you're supposed to do. And I definitely will wait till my grease is hot with the meat, okay? You definitely don't want to do that with meat. What I just did. All right. Now, while this is getting warm, what we're going to do for a split second is straighten up the bar, okay? Um, I was going to make some slaw real quick, but I don't know. I don't know. What do y'all think? Let's put some, uh, get a sifter out for our gravy. Now, I'm not going to make a lot of gravy either because it's just me and Chris. So just get you some, I always use a sifter when I make gravy. You don't have to, but it's just good when you do, you know, just good. I promise. All right, just let me pick up real quick, because you know what happens in a real kitchen? You pick up as you're, as you're cooking. If you don't, then you just have a big mess when you get done, and you can't even eat for everything laying around in the way. And we got to wait till that grease heats up, so we may as well pick up. Now, my station, my show, is more about not entertainment but to teach you how to cook like Mama did. And if you're going to teach somebody to cook like Mama did, you got to move around in the kitchen, run, get your grease, wipe off the counter. You know, that's real life. So that's why I try to teach y'all is real life cooking. You can always go to Food Network if you just want to see somebody throw something in a bowl or have a contest, right? All right. And I'm not saying I don't like those kind of shows. My favorite show, and, my, and most people think I'm crazy, is Hell's Kitchen. I just love Hell's Kitchen. I just love it. All right. Um, You know what? We really could make some slaw. We got time. Y'all want to? I think we should. Let me grab some stuff. Well, I guess I better not. Because my, my mayonnaise, I got to open a new mayonnaise. All my stuff's not in here, so I won't. All right, I'll let y'all just look at the stove. I'm going to take this off long enough to let y'all see the biscuits in the oven. Okay. This is my little oven. And there they are baking. And they're getting really close to being done. There's the potatoes. You don't want to flip your potatoes. You want them to be good and golden. Okay. Here's our meat getting hot. I mean, our grease getting hot. You're going to want it hot. And here's my granny green beans in the background. Yeah, they look like they're all swiveled up, but that's how they're good. And you can always take a test piece and throw it in there, a little test piece, and see if it sizzles before you um, do anything with it. So what we can do right quick while we're waiting is I'm going to get out some meal to make our gravy with. We'll go ahead and sit it over here. I had this out in case I made slaw, but I'm making enough for y'all. Ain't I? I think my biscuits are about brown, y'all. I think we need to get them out. I don't like them too brown. Daddy always liked his real brown. Is that real enough for y'all? Maybe a little bit more. Maybe five more minutes. We'll be all right. All right, we're gonna bring y'all over here. We're gonna fry up the steak. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to have steak and gravy for supper? I am. It's time to flip the taters too. But we're gonna drop the steak first. This time I'm gonna bring y'all down a little closer so y'all can enjoy the food, okay? So we're going to hop right here, drop the 
meat real quick and then we're going to turn those french fries There it goes. Let's get these flipped right here. They're brown. That's how you want them. That's how I like them. Now, somebody asked me the day, will you show me how to make potatoes and onions that ain't mushy? This is how. You let them get brown before you flip them. Now, I could have very well put onions in here. I didn't, but you can. But you let them get good and brown before you turn them. You don't turn them too early. That's all there is to it. Put enough oil in there so that they're just not sitting in there without any oil in it. And you uh, make sure that you cook them and let them get brown. I think I'm going to let y'all see them up close because I don't think y'all can see how brown, how really brown they are. Sorry, y'all, but... Chris is occupied today. I see how brown they are. And I let them get that brown before I ever turned them the first time. Now, I always set a timer when you're doing meat. Let's just put it on uh, two minutes. Why'd that go to five minutes? I hit five. Lord have mercy. Okay. Now our potatoes are going to be done before our meat is. But you know what? This is the hottest eye on the stove, so I think I'm going to trade them out right quick. Now, if you don't like your potatoes to be that crunchy, then make sure that you don't cook them as long as I did. But I sure like them like that. Let's do trade, trade. I'm going to turn this down to low or a medium. Don't turn it all the way down on low because you don't want them to get soggy, okay? And then we're going to make some gravy. And um, let's get our biscuits. Y'all, I'm just concerned about my biscuits being in this little oven. I can't help it. Now they're good and brown. Let's put some butter on them. Now we just rolled these real quick and got them in here because I, I just wanted to have a few biscuits uh, with my gravy. You come here, butter. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm not as good at on the, as the in the with the camera as Chris is. Y'all, y'all not gonna figure out why he's the cameraman. Now, when you make biscuits or cornbread, flip it. If you don't, it'll stick. I mean, it won't stick. It'll sweat. I see how pretty my iron skillet looks. It's nice and smooth. They're good and brown, too. All right, I'm going to put y'all back up here. And we are going to flip this meat. Well, I'll flip it up close for y'all. we got to get these potatoes out of here. I think 
I got them brown enough, don't y'all? All right, let me put y'all back up here so I can finish up. I'm going to turn my green beans back on. Now, sometimes people get very concerned when I get something done before something else, and they're like, it's going to get cold, it's going to get cold. And I'm like, it'll be all right. Lord, I got these two gray on y'all. About burn them. Somebody wants some crunchy taters? Well, I know one thing. I answered their question. How do you make potatoes that aren't mushy? I guarantee you those ain't mushy. <laughs> Ooh, it'll be good, though. So, we're going to turn off this. And I wonder if I should just turn that back on and put a piece of that meat over here and see if it won't get browner quicker. Why not? Then I can't reuse my grease, though. I don't want to do that because I want to be able to reuse my grease. Now, I won't reuse this grease, but I will reuse my uh, other one. All right, I'm going to let this sit in there. One more minute on this side. I'm going to flip it once. Let it sit in there another minute on the other side. Then we're going to make some gravy and we're going to eat. Green beans are getting hot. I guess I could butter a biscuit. Y'all want to see me butter a biscuit? Better biscuits with sugar in them. That's what I'll have for dessert tonight. It'll be my dessert. Okay. Did your mama ever make you one of those? So you put you some butter on your biscuit. And then we'll just sprinkle a little bit of sugar on it. And that'll be my dessert tonight, y'all. For real. Now, a lot of y'all don't know it, but you can do that with a biscuit. Put that sugar on there like that. And uh, cut up some strawberries and have a strawberry shortcake with your biscuit. So don't go half, you don't have to have a cake. Um, you can have, for real, you can have a... Uh, the best strawberry shortcake you've ever had is to take a biscuit like that, put that butter on it just like I did, sprinkle sugar in it, put it in the bowl, put your strawberries over the top of it, and some Cool Whip. You can't beat it. Best strawberry shortcake you'll ever eat. I promise. Alright, we're going to get this meat out done. I'll let y'all see it up close. Good. Fried steak. Now let's make some gravy. Y'all ready? Then we can eat. Let me turn off these things behind me. Turn this off. Now, I can't use all this grease in my gravy, of course. And if you let it sit here for a minute, if you're not careful, it'll burn the drippings. And you don't want your drippings to be burnt. Because if they are, then your gravy ain't going to taste good. So let's get something to pour it in. Why are you beeping? I get so aggravated this oven. I know a lot of y'all like it, but it drives me crazy. I'd just soon have an old-fashioned one any day. As to have this crazy oven. Y'all want to trade? I'll trade with you. I liked my oven. My old-fashioned, just plain old gas stove. Better than I like this one. 
can find me. Let me out lock all this new stuff. It ain't what it's cracked up to be. Now leave enough in there. I don't want that many drippings in there either. That's too many. See, I had a lot of flour on that. And so you got to be careful. You don't want to get so much on there. It ain't going to be good. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, jelly bean? And it's already turning brown. Gotta hurry. You gotta hurry. You can't be shooting the bull like I'm doing. As Daddy would call it. Because as soon as them drippings get burnt, that gravy's going to taste burnt. And just put your flour in there a little bit at a time until it gets nice and looks about like it. You don't even have to measure it if you do it that way. Then add you some milk. That's all there is to it. Salt and pepper it. Let's salt and pepper it. I like to use a wire whisk. Why? Because it keeps it from being lumpy. I like to use um, a sifter because it also keeps it from being lumpy. It just makes really good gravy when you do. You don't have to. It's not required. If you don't have the money, don't go out and just buy it just to make gravy. But, and a regular uh, a regular whisk works good too, but these are even better because the way they go around the sides of the uh, skillet. And I really like my, no kidding, I like my cast iron better than anything when it comes to a lot of cooking. I use my stainless steel and my cast iron, those two things, and of course I use a non-stick skillet for pancakes and eggs. Uh, so I just have my favorites for different things. Now you gotta wait till that gets hot. Once it gets hot, of course it gets thick. We're gonna pour it over our steak as soon as it does. It's gonna be good, good. Y'all watch that for me for a second. Y'all tell me when it bubbles. <laughs> tell me. Guess what I got? I got strawberries. I might make this strawberry shortcake for dessert. Make Chris one. He will love me. What man don't love? Biscuits, gravy, fried steak, fried potatoes, and a dessert. Why, well, he'd have to be crazy. He'd have to be lost his mind not to like that, wouldn't he? Now we can reuse our grease that we fried up our potatoes in to do anything with, okay? Because it was, I didn't even put onion in it, so it's not going to taste like onion. Um, so we can use it to fry up something else. We can use it to fry up meat. We can use it to fry up squash or okra or whatever it is we want to do with it. I just put it in a jar. Or most of the time, to tell you the truth, I don't put it in nothing. I put a plate over the top of the skillet. Didn't your mama do that? Just put a plate over the top of it and leave it on the oven. And then the next time you cook, use it. Okay? It ain't rocket science. Right? So that's what mama did. That's what I do. So if you ever see, lots of times when, you turn, when I turn on my camera, you'll see stuff on the stove where I have left grease on the stove. And I'm just going to reuse it later so I don't pour it up. I mean, why pour it up when you're just going to be cooking the next night or a couple of nights later? Now, if you cook once a month, you better pour it up. <laughs> All right, that's done. That look good? I'm not even going to pour it up. How's that? We're going to make a plate. I'm going to put it on the table just like this. I'm going to make y'all a plate right quick. <laughs> Is he gone? No, he's up there. He's going to come in and talk to us. 
Well, come on in here, baby. I'm making a play. Is he doing measurements now? Yes. All right, here's some fried steak, y'all. We'll let Chris have this plate. Chris, you want a, a strawberry shortcake later? Because if you do, I'm going to butter you a biscuit. Yes. Yeah. Let's butter Chris a biscuit. He deserves it. There he is, the man. Y'all, he's tired. That's why he didn't video. Y'all forgive him, won't you? I cooked anyway. So what you do when you make strawberry shortcake, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. But now you're going to sprinkle these with sugar. Okay? You're going to take your strawberries, rinse them off. You're going to slice them. Go ahead and take that off and video me, baby, for a second. You will. Can and then you it? can show the... And then you can show the um, plate that I'm making. Here, let me turn it around for you. He's getting his glasses on. Okay, so slice up your strawberries. Put them in a little bowl. Put a little sugar on them. Don't do anything else. Stick them in the microwave. No kidding. In the microwave. One minute. No more. No less. Take them out. Put them in the refrigerator. And then serve them cold over your strawberry shortcake. A lot of people slice up their strawberries and they let them sit there all day and let that sugar soak in. All you got to do is zap them for one minute in the microwave. It does the same thing. All right. And then you put you on some Cool Whip or whipped cream, whichever one you like. Right. All right. Let's put some gravy on here, Daddy. Look how brown I got them taters. Look just right to me. You like them like that, don't you? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to get some green beans on the plate. Some gravy. Would y'all eat it? Your eyes are off, aren't they? What are you talking about? I thought you meant the eyes on my head. No, I know your eyes are not out. <laughs> I eyes, really did. I eyes thought eyes on what? your head are okay. Yes, baby, they're off. Okay. They're all off. People are getting wound up about it. The eyes are off. Okay. Everything's off, guys. Off, 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 off. I got it, y'all. There you go. Ooh, I know what I didn't do. Uh oh. I didn't soft and taters. Well, they'll have ketchup on them. He'll forgive me. And a biscuit right there. Yeah. Does that look good? You want me to cut it and taste it, y'all? It's good to me. Or better yet, let him eat it. Will you cut cut it and taste it for him, Daddy? Yeah. He can't tell me no when we're live. Lots of times he tells me no. Hmm. He does. But since I cook for him, he's going right. to taste it. How's this? It's clean. It's clean enough. Yeah, all it's got on it's butter. Here, let me hit you a fork. Alabama man. He went to Georgia to school, y'all, but he wears an Alabama shirt. Look at that. Perfect. It's done. I love cube steak. I he would, loves I it. I would eat it every week. I'm not crazy about it. I'm really not. It looks pretty good. Is it pretty good? Is it pretty good? It's about time I cooked you something to eat, ain't it, Daddy? It's so good to eat. Or it's so good, I'm ready to eat right now. Okay. I'm not even going to stop. I'm just going to keep eating. Okay. <laughs> Y'all have a great day. And thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook. Like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya. Y'all come back and see us. Wish we could uh, eat strawberry shortcake with you, but we got to go talk to a gutter guy, so we got to get this down our in our bellies so that we can see what kind of a quote he gives us. Bye, y'all. Love you.